Hi, I'm Dr. Amy. Welcome to this blog video. Today we're talking about trauma and specifically the effects of trauma on the fear of being seen. The fear of being seen for who we truly are, the fear of truly being known, and trauma results in this belief that we are different, that we're not enough, that there's something about us that pushes people away, or that we're too much for other people. And so if they were to truly know us, all parts of us, then they would leave us, then they would um, kick us out, then they would reject us, abandon us. And those feelings of being abandoned and being different are so painful that our system responds in a self-protective way. And tells us that we just should not be seen, should not be known, and it puts up walls and facades in order to protect us from being seen and being truly known. And so those who experienced early childhood attachment trauma still find themselves in adulthood having these moments, having these situations where they want to run and hide. Even in their career, they're professionals, they're otherwise successful, and they go to put themselves out there, go to promote their work. Maybe they've done a creative work, written a book, um, whatever it is. And now it's time to promote that, promote themselves. If it's something that they did authentically that really showed their heart, they can have this response, even as an adult, that little child response of, I need to run and hide, this isn't safe. They'll see me for who I really am. They'll make fun of me. They'll criticize me. They'll leave me there. They'll abandon me. And so this um, fear of being seen and being known can persist well into adulthood that had its origins in early childhood attachment trauma. We know that in response to trauma, our nervous system gets wired for hypervigilance and for self-protection. It starts to see threats everywhere in the world and so has developed these mechanisms and wired these mechanisms so efficiently so that in response to any situation, the smallest of things, it can immediately put us into that um, survival response of fight, <laughs> flight, run away, or freeze. And a lot of the fear of being seen can result in the flight response where we just run, a, run away and hide. Often that does include the freeze response because, you know, it's like that deer in the headlights. Uh-oh, I've, I've been seen. I've been um, seen for who I truly am. I need to run and hide. So it's a little bit of both at times. Some of the core insecurities and beliefs of a child who is coming from a place of having had attachment trauma is that I am unlovable, I am unwanted, and even I am inherently different. There is something about me that is just not enough. And if people truly were to get to know me, truly see me for who I am, they would leave. And so this feeling of judgment, uh, criticism, ridicule, and even abandonment is so painful for that child who experienced that as an infant in their relationship with their primary caregiver, that they will do anything to avoid that feeling from others. Which is ironic because they're quite good at beating themselves up for criticizing themselves excessively. And so they give themselves the same judgment, criticism, and abandonment that they fear most from other people, but somehow to them that feels safer and if it comes from them rather than from other people. But this fear of uh, feeling judged, criticized, abandoned is so strong that any situation that has the potential to create that makes their system want to run and hide. This is especially true if a child also experienced any kind of physical or sexual abuse where, again, the psychology can be more easily understood in these situations where 
the child begins to think that if they just cannot be seen, if they can hide, if they can be invisible, then whoever it is that is hurting them won't hurt them anymore because they won't even see them. So again, it's this strong desire to self-protect by hiding. And so those with early childhood attachment trauma hide their true selves from the world. And they do this by putting up walls, putting up facades, portraying themselves as who they want to be seen as rather than who they feel they truly are. And even though this may result in them feeling like they belong or feeling like they can uh, put themselves out there, it is, it is fake. It is not their true self. And it does hurt their heart to live this way. It further compounds the inner tension and trauma by continuing to put up these walls and facades rather than being able to show, show up and be themselves and have this different experience of being accepted and loved for who they really are. So what is the answer to healing? Well, when healing from any form of trauma, the answer is always going to be to create a different felt experience. Talking, talk therapy does not reach the level of the brain that's needed in order to rewire the brain and the nervous system. You really have to create a new feeling, a new felt experience to reach the emotional level of the brain that can rewire the system. So how do you create this new felt experience? First of all, whether you're working with a child with attachment disorder or you're working with yourself and healing from trauma, it is essential to develop an attitude of curiosity, acceptance, compassion, rather than criticism and judgment. If we're going to encourage our child or ourselves to start to live more authentically, and even just be honest with ourselves about who we truly are, if we meet that with any kind of judgment or criticism, we're going to shut back down, our systems are going to go into self-protect mode, our walls are going to come up, and it's going to be even harder next time to open up and share if that's the experience we created for ourselves. So creating a safe place where no matter what comes up, as we get to know this part of us that feels really scared to be seen, to be known, if we can meet that part with curiosity, compassion, and acceptance, it will feel safe to at least be seen by ourselves. And once we can have that compassion and understanding for ourselves, then it's easier to share that with other people who are safe people in the right way. So whether you're working with a child or you're working with yourself, the answer is going to be creating this different felt experience where it is received with acceptance and compassion and curiosity when it is able to be vulnerable and open up, be seen, be known, and, um, and then it feels cherished. It feels held rather than criticized and judged. So I invite you to explore this further. If there are situations in your life that you can look back on and you can relate and say, wow, I really wanted to run away and hide, really wanted to run away and escape, then explore that and just gently kind of inquire about why, why did I? What was it about that situation that made me want to escape? How did I want to escape? And just by asking some of these questions, again, in a very compassionate way, you'll begin to understand that part of yourself and be able to understand what exactly it is that it's afraid of and then how to, how to help it, how to, how to help it in those moments or even before you get to other situations in life later on, what do you need to do to help that part feel safe in order to show up, be seen, be heard, and be known? 
I hope this has helped, and if you have any questions, I welcome your comments.